Welcome back. Let's get chatting with the management of Angel One. Uh, reported a good set of earnings for the second quarter with the volumes coming in at all-time high levels. Remember, we did speak with the company when uh, they reported their second quarter update itself. But now that the numbers are out, we have with us the CEO, Narayan Gangadhar, joining in. Uh, Mr. Gangadhar, thank you so much for joining in. You know, before we talk about your numbers as a whole, we have uh, uh, the operational numbers that came by 10 days ago as well. What I wanted to know yeah. is that uh, the new payout rules came into effect last Friday itself. I mean, uh, you know, the first Friday of every uh, quarter, all brokerages must be transferring all their unused funds back to customers' bank accounts. And this was expected to impact your working capital. Can you give us a sense of how uh, this has, uh, you know, played out so far? It's early days still. Yeah. So, first of all, uh, thank you for having me on the program. And I think these, uh, these new regulatory changes, they are actually... Uh, you know they're they are actually they're actually going to be a tremendous value add for the whole ecosystem because they are building the institutional credibility for the broking business as a whole. So all of these changes are more than welcome and we fully embrace those changes. Now let's talk about this particular payout. So the payout happened on seventh, which is the first Friday of the quarter, and that's what it's going to be going forward. Now we for us because we are completely tech enabled. We use this as a catalyst to bring new experiences and new journeys live with our product. As a result of which, on the subsequent Monday, the very next Monday after the payout, we didn't see even a 5% drop in our business. We in fact saw that the total number of orders went up by about 4% relative to what it was on the Monday before. So what's happened is that these changes have served as an excellent catalyst for further pushing our digitization strategy, for further introducing newer journeys, which overall are going to strengthen the client experience. So, uh, you know, there, there you have it. We have live data from the, from the last six days saying the money that went out came back within the first, you know, within the first week itself. And we didn't see any drop in any order volume at all, uh, even on the very next Monday. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Gangadhar, good, good afternoon. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the revenue per client. So if you look at it on an yes. average, right, the revenue per client has been declining. In the quarter Correct. gone by, you had about uh, 430 rupees per client. And way back uh, in Q2 of last year, it was almost 544. Now, I agree that uh, uh, competition is also picking up. But do you see any improvement here or could it get worse before it gets better? See, I think you're looking at the wrong metric, okay? This ARPU in a commodity business, broking used to be a boutique business. It used to be only for people who are over 35 who have a certain level of disposable income and stuff. You know, today, broking is for masses. Most people who are entering the business today, they are at, uh, they are basically uh, within the age of uh, 25 to 30. So as the market has rapidly expanded, the volumes have gone up. If you look at the volumes that we have reported this quarter, we are at 228 million orders, which is our all-time high which is also a significant jump over where it was in the previous quarter. So in terms of ARPU, yes, as more and more people come to the market, yes, the, the actual unit number is going, to is going to trend downwards. But as a whole, as a business, we are only going to continue to get much stronger with time. When you say much stronger, what do you mean? Uh, can you quantify that for us in numbers? Yeah, I mean, the order volume is going to go up. Our, with economies of scale, what we are seeing is our products are becoming more efficient. Operationally, we run the business, you know, we, we have a great opportunity to take out the white space and even operate at much higher levels of, uh, uh, you know, of, uh, uh, of profitability, right? Largely because the technology investments, product investments are driving innovation across, uh, a, across a wide spectrum of, uh, our, uh, of our established user base. And, you know, the way we also look at our top line business, the way I look at it is that, see, we want to operate the business within a 45 to 50% OPM. And this for the last three quarters now straight, we have been operating at 52% OPM. So as far as I'm concerned, and we look at the business itself, you know, we don't really sweat a lot over how the ARPU is trending down or up or whatnot, because what we look at is the macro picture. We look at the macro number of orders, the macro profitability, and the envelope that which we want to operate in. So let's uh, get us uh, some macro numbers then, Mr. Gangadhar. You know, uh, you added about, what, 1.2 million new clients in the previous quarter. Yeah. Just wanted to understand yes, at what run rate is this likely to go going forward? And where do you see your overall yeah. uh, client base to be, say, three to five years from now, the rate at which uh, clients are being added? 
Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. Uh, first of all, there is uh, out of all the brokers today in India, there's only uh, a few of us who are actually adding clients. Most of them are not, you know. So uh, see, what has happened is that the I expect that the rate of uh, customer addition is only going to is is only going to increase over the next coming years. I mean, look at this year, right? The RBI has increased interest rates four times this year, four times. And if you look at the response of the market, it's been very muted, and still. We are seeing clients come in on board and actively engaging in the business and participating. So because our equity participation is just at 5% or, or even below that, right? Nationally, the country has at least another 8 to 10% of headroom left. So when I look at the next three years, I think that uh, as an industry, the broking industry, it's easily going to at least grow uh, uh, you know, by three or four times within these next uh, few years. You know? And we don't, we don't see any uh, slowdown coming uh, to that end. Okay. Uh, so, we are still not getting any numbers mm. from you. So, trying to understand, I mean, your client base right now has gone up uh, about 11.1%. At 1.1 yeah. crores, and the number of orders are around 23 crores. So, on that base, right. what kind of growth do you see for the rest of the year? So, see the growth that we have seen for this for this year. Whatever growth rate we have seen, for example, this year we grew uh, in terms of client acquisition. See, the client acquisition, I expect to continue at the three to four lakh range is what uh, we have been acquiring customers at per month. Like last month was, I think, 3.9. I expect that to continue through the next six months, largely because there's a lot of inflatory pressures coming in and there's a lot of, uh, you know, um, uh, th there's a lot of uh, pent up, uh, pent up, you know, uh, pent up issues that are going on on the geopolitical scene, which is also impacting India and India's economic uh, fiscal policy. So if you, uh, if you ask me, what do we look at as the run rate? I would say between uh, four to five lakh, between any, anywhere between three and a half to five lakhs. That's where we are, where we are going to be at for the next uh, four to five months. All right, we take that point. Uh, just a quick bookkeeping question before we let you go. Your ESOP cost uh, yeah. was higher in the second quarter than the first quarter. What is uh, the cost that you expect going forward, the ESOP costs? See, the ESOP costs, again, uh, we, uh, to look at the, we, as, as I told you, right, we are looking at the macro level. I, uh, I think particularly the ESOP costs are going to be within the range that we have already seen so far. But we are in the growth phase. We are not interested in conserving capital. Just to be perfectly clear, we are a growth company. We care more about where the top line is going and how to get to a pole position. And our metric is to operate the business within a 45 to 50 percent OPM. Now, within that envelope, whether the ESOP costs even goes up by 2x or 3x, it doesn't really matter because our overall bottom line and top line is going to be maintained for uh, the shareholders and creating further shareholder value. So that's really a macro answer to the question. Micro level, I don't think anything changes within the next quarter or so. 